Hello guys, I have made a simple Friday Night Funkin' template project on Hyperpad, which you can branch and modify for your own use. Now this has been a thing for a while, so some people had the chance to make mods, but now I'm going to make a tutorial on it, which is this video. You can support us by downloading Hyperpad from the App Store, which is also what I will be using to make my mod. Every positive rating will be appreciated. Thank you. Before I start with the tutorial, I want to make this disclaimer clear. The tutorial I'm about to show you will only work on iOS for now. Maybe in the future, Hyperpad supports Android, but I don't, I don't have, have a time, time machine. machine. You're only making a mod for iOS specifically. So this won't allow you to make mods on PC, but this will allow you to make a native mobile version of your mod on iOS. This tutorial assumes that you already have some basic knowledge of how Hyperpad works. Right now, there's a lot of demand, but not much supply. So I'm looking to see what awesome mods you guys create with Hyperpad. I will play through them in, in another video. You can make some crazy Friday Night Funkin' mods on your iPad with no coding and no prior knowledge of programming. Let's get started. You can branch the Friday Night Funkin' template to modify and use as your own. You can credit me if you want. Your project will automatically be linked to my project since you branched it for my project. Yeah. That's how it works. You can't plagiarize. Not that plagiarism is a good thing, it's just that you shouldn't be able to take someone else's project and claim it 100% as your own, like you programmed the whole thing by yourself, which you obviously didn't. Anyways, uh, once you have branched my project, you can name the project to whatever you like. Press branch and you'll be immediately taken to the project to edit it and stuff. You can see this big black box covering the whole scene. You can hide it or delete it if you want. It's in the scene UI layer. It's just there to simply make the scene fade in from black when it starts. Do whatever you want. Everything else is in the main layer and you can select any object you like to manipulate. You can change its assets or go into the behaviors to modify how the object acts in your scene. Daddy, dearest, and boyfriend have their own behaviors that you can change and animations that you can replace. Boyfriend has way more animations because there are missing animations. We can look at Daddy Dearest and he only has like 6 which are his idle and singing animations. Like I said, you can replace the graphics with your own and you can program whatever you want into these objects. Now, a lot of people are wondering how to import songs into this thing. There is an orange box in the main layer called Brains of the Game. Inside, there is a lot of behaviors. This is where the magic happens. This is where the mapping and notes spawn and take place. This behavior, Play Music 1, is where the scene will play its music. By default, it's this song. The song will include the voices of the characters. It's all in one audio file. You can just import a song and replace the song with that song and boom, the game will play your custom song. However, the mapping has not changed. Three, two, one. the mapping data is. There's one for the opponent and one for the player. If you have watched this T-Pom video, you would know that mapping in the game are translated from MIDI files, and that is also true in this template project. Before I dive into the mapping, I want to explain some of the variables involved. In the game, there are two types of notes, a tap note and a hold note. The shortest hold note duration determines how long a note needs to be to become a hold note. If a note was a second long, it would become a hold note because it is greater than this number. Otherwise, if it was like 0.1 seconds long, then it would be a tap note because it's not long enough to become a hold note. 
In other words, it is lesser than this number. Note duration determines how long a note will be on screen. The smaller this number is, the faster the notes will be as they are on screen for a smaller amount of time and vice versa. Beats per minute or BPM and beats per measure or self-explanatory. These variables depend on the music you are using. Beat, interval, and intro determines how long it takes for a song to start playing. Before a song starts playing, there is a countdown that says, Ready, set, go! Three, two, one, go! The time between each of these points is determined by the variable. So every two beats in this example, the game will move onto the next point until it has to start the song. Ticks per beat is a variable that depends on the mini files you are using for the mapping. Like I mentioned earlier, the mapping is based on mini files. Each mini file has its own unit of time called ticks per beat or tick speed, which can vary between each user production software. This is very important to know because using the wrong tick speed can make your mapping off sync with the user. I will show you how to determine the tick speed later. The left and right mappings are the opponent's and player's mappings, respectively. You don't have to worry about the format of this, you won't have to type any of this out. These are just MIDI files converted to text put into these variables. There's a website that does all of this for you, which I will explain later. Now, let's open up our music production software app. Please use one that is most comfortable for you. I am most comfortable with FL Studio, so I will use FL Studio. You can use whatever music making app you like. Just make sure it can export mini files. So, I have my song right here. This is the original soundtrack with the character voices included. <laughs> And up here, I have two different tracks representing the opponent and player voices. These are keyboard channels, so they're like pianos where you can add and remove notes. Now, these keyboard channels are what will define the mapping for your characters. Each key corresponds to an arrow. Starting from the C key, that's a left arrow. Then the next key will be a down arrow, then the up arrow, and then right. Then this pattern repeats, so you can do this anywhere you like. You could just place the melody of the character and the mapping can work from there. But if you're trying to map out a song where you don't already have the notes, you can just follow the note scale and decide what arrow you want to spawn at any specific point. You can do whatever you think is best for your situation. Now that we have done that for both of our characters, we should rename these keyboard channels so we know which channel is which for when we convert the MIDI into text. Once you're done, export the MIDI, save it somewhere and remember the file name. This website allows you to convert MIDI files into text. Don't change any of the settings, leave it as it is. Import your MIDI file and press send. After a moment, you will have your MIDI file displayed in text form that you can copy and paste into Hyperpad. A mini file is just a long list of commands representing each channel and the notes of each channel. On the very first line, where it says M file, the last parameter on the very right is the tick speed. Yep, that's one of the variables that we need. You can simply copy and paste it. You can see this is the left channel, because I, I named one of the channels the left channel, and this is where the left channel starts. So below that will be the notes in that left channel. You want to start copying on the line where the note data is, and each note will have on or off as its second parameter, which determines when a note has been pressed or when a note has stopped being held. You just look for the on and off parameter, check what channel it's in, copy all the lines containing all the notes until you reach a point where the note data ends which is represented by meta track in. Obviously, that signifies that there are no more notes on this track, and this is where the track ends. Copy all of that and paste it into the left or right mapping. In this case, the notes I just copied were from the left channel. Do the same for the other channel. Copy and paste it into the left or right mapping. In this case, the notes I just copied were from the right channel. Boom. We are done with the mapping. Now, you can adjust all of these other variables to your liking. 
Don't forget the BPM and beats per measure. Those are important. Okay, let's test our project. Three, two, one. Awesome. You can do whatever you want afterwards. You can add effects, make cutscenes, do whatever. This is your project after all. And don't forget to have fun. Also, this project that I just made will be in the description if you want to play or branch it. Do whatever. Okay.